Will this be the episode that we get to drive it? Got a couple of straight brake lines here that I got made up and my harnesses have arrived. We'll get the new rubber brake line in. Big thanks again to Brian for building me up these calipers. We'll get the axle in while I'm here. Brian's already done the upgrade for me on the hubs while he had all this at his house. We'll gently get the long side in. So this is the upgraded bolt that Brian's put in. This could be a Brian segment. The upgraded hub, the caliper. Thanks a lot, mate. Working on the short side now. But I love organisation, I feel like I'm an organised person. But check this out, I mean, I, Brian did these calipers up months and months ago. And I, he told me to order the new um, rubber lines, which I have. But you know, I don't even have to worry about anything. I take the bolt out, and we've got two brand new copper washers on it. So just organisation really helps in a build like this. I'm gonna start with the short side bend this up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come down and then run, try and run parallel up to that junction. The other side is going to be tricky, but we'll start with this side because this is the easy side. We might make up a bit of a template for this side to go around. Definitely going to need the saddles on this side. Wanted to do this for a while now. Oh, let the fluid run through. What I'll do until Adam gets here, I'll let it do a bit of a gravity bleed. I'll, I'll crack the bleeders, top up the fluid. Got some fluid coming through. It's probably gonna have quite a bit of air in it still. So what will happen is I'll lock this one off and the other one will start to bleed because this is the furthest one away from the master cylinder. So we'll just let that run for a bit. Keep an eye on that level. So this is what I call a gravity bleed. And you know what, 90% of the time, that's all I ever do when I'm doing it. If shells are around, I'll get it to do a proper bleed. But this generally gets me going. Pedal feels awesome. What we'll do next is we'll run the diff breather. We'll change that barb and we'll rerun that hose, which isn't gonna be long enough now. We'll have to come straight up, uh, maybe into the toolbox. Now temporarily, until we put the second transfer case in, I've got to work out this tail shaft. So there's a lot of slip exposed there. We've moved the diff back. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a spacer at each end. So I've got a 25mm spacer at the diff end and I'll have a 25mm spacer at the transfer end. That'll temporarily fix it. Because then we need to cut it down around the 6 inches anyway. So it's pointless extending it now. Now I'm going to go ahead and assume that this is the last time that this wheel's coming off. It's nice to have a hub to sit on now too. Some nice new wheel nuts. Won't be able to run my center cap anymore. We don't have spaces to hide so it's all good. Time for some liquid gold. We're ticking through the jobs. I really hope I can keep Penride as a sponsor for next year. So that's two years we've had them and two years we've had COVID disrupt the season. Fingers crossed we can compete again this year or at least wheel and do all the social media stuff for them. Drove the forerunner into work today. So we can uh, weld up that broken torque rod bracket where it sits in the diff. I'll get that off so Adam can weld it up when we have our brake. Good as gold. Awesome.
chest. All right, the back's just off. Let me see the shock. I reckon it's these saddles. All right, bring it back down. I'll take the saddles off. What else? How's everything else look? No, you still got plenty of shock. Yeah, I'm starting to do the chubby ribs here. Oh no, look at that. It's starting to turn. Yeah, I was going to say, it might as well go Sam, it's not. I think it's more than what it was. Oh yeah, it's way more than what it was. Them brake lines are still okay. It's those saddles. Let me undo the saddles. I mean, that spring's gone way backward. So where would the bump stop go? Well, yeah, let's have a look. Straight in. Oh, it's probably, you need to come down. You need like a bit of box section. If you yeah. put, if you weld a bit of box section there then drill and just drill a hole through it, right? Yep. Done. I reckon we just go 50 mil, 50 RHS. And I wonder if those saddles are hitting, they are for sure. And we're gonna reenact what a bump stop will be. Okay, so we're gonna do a 50 mil box section and then the bump stop. Because that, that closed up way too much. Alright, so that's what the bump stop's going to probably do. It's going to still squash. Okay, we're still on the ground. Okay, you're just off. Keep going. That helps it heaps with the bump stop. It forces it more, right? Uh, 40s are definitely going to hit in there. We're not touching the tower. The bump stops actually worked well. All right. Just want to wheel it now, but see how the high stairs. There's nothing by. There's nothing restricting any travel here. We're about five mil off me sump with that front arm. Oh, really? Yep. Here and you got to try to get up it. Yeah, yeah, that's in the way for tough track. But if we come forward an inch and we've got a bigger rolling diameter, yeah, we've got to cut all this out though. But that's good, I'm happy with the flex down. And there's no bump stops in the front and it's starting to walk. See that? It's starting to turn. Look at that, man. A 40's going to hit the tray. Look. That's pretty good flex. Okay, we need the bump stop in there. There's still a bit to do, but it's, it's good. Happy. That old boy gets in his truck.
I walk back into the factory and what's the old bugger up to now? Stay tuned for the next episode. And as always, thanks for watching.